So hello everyone, I'm Dmitry with Hardware Connects and in this video I want to talk about overclocking your Ryzen processor beyond the specified boost clocks. I'm using the Ryzen 7 1700X. I recently built a system, make sure to check out how it compared to my previous Skylink machine. It's a very interesting result. And with my 1700X, there is headroom for overclocking to four gigahertz. So what is uh, what are we gaining when we overclock that additional 200 megahertz from what I have it now? And uh, what are some of the things that arise with such an overclock? Let's talk about all that right after this. Cooler Master is hosting an exciting Overwatch tournament with a $40,000 prize pool that will go towards one high school robotics team. You can watch live on Twitch or visit the eSports Arena downtown Santa Ana for free. More info at CoolerMasterInvitational.com so I am overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz on my 1700X at 1 1.33 volts, which is pretty good. I'm going to try to bring the voltage down to uh, bring those temperatures down as well. I'm using the Pure Rock cooler for now. It's been doing a really good job with 3.8 gigahertz. But the one crappy thing with Ryzen is temperature monitoring. So here real temp is not supported. So we have to rely on the Ryzen master utility, which gives us just that one number right there uh, there's no way to log it there's no way to know what uh, our core temperatures are you know per eight cores so that's unfortunate and we have to rely on this sort of compromise and try to see how uh, our temperatures are affected with the overclock also it's very interesting to see how one of the threads is occupied as you can see over here this is with the ryzen master utility open uh, and therefore it has to be shut down during benchmarking process so it doesn't affect results because it is actually consuming uh, a little bit too much. So this is right now the idle temperature at 3.8 gigahertz. We're having around 30s, but jumps to 35 to 37 sometimes. Not exactly sure why there's nothing happening in the background. This is using a pure rock cooler. So notice what happens with the idle temperature when we boost this to four gigahertz. So this is what the temperature situation looks like now at four gigahertz. We're having around 50s. It sometimes jumped to 55. It's gonna lower up to about 42. And I have increased the voltage to 1.4. Not sure why it's registering as 1.35 right now. But yeah, this is what it looks like when we jump that additional 200 megahertz. We gain 10 plus, almost 20 degrees Celsius on the core. The one thing I appreciate about the ASUS Crosshair 6 motherboard is the fact that in the BIOS we have built-in overclocking presets. So I can do this manually or I can simply go into overclocking presets and load a 4 gigahertz overclocking profile to my 1700X. In the past it has worked but it wasn't stable which I'm thinking is because of the CPU cooler. So we are overclocked to 4 gigahertz and look what happens when I try to run the Cinebench R15 benchmark. I think the computer will crash almost immediately so yeah boom right there so with this crash two things are happening the ryzen master utility i can see the temperature spikes to like 70 plus degrees celsius and the computer would read that as 90 plus because of that temp 20 degree temperature offset and number two we get an error code 8 with the DRAM uh, LED on the motherboard flashing. The RAM is overclocked to 2400 megahertz, which is its default state. All the timings are correct as per specification, along with the voltage. And my motherboard has the latest BIOS updated, which I think is 1201. I know there's a beta software that's floating around for the motherboard, but I'm just sticking with the official one right now. So what I've done now is load that four gigahertz profile once again. So once again, let's run the Cinebench R15 benchmark. Let's see if it crashes. Now with 2166 on the memory side, and the CPU overclocked to four gigahertz. Oh, and there it goes. And we're getting the same error code eight and the DRAM flashing. The CPU is fine with that green uh, LED. So that's uh, good to know. So maybe something's just wrong with my memory. So that LED indicator on the motherboard means there's something wrong with memory. And I swapped it out for G Skill Trident Z. This is rated at 3200 megahertz, but I kept it underclocked severely. 2166 or 2133 just to make sure that we are playing in a safe uh, megahertz zone because memory and Ryzen uh, compatibility is still kind of iffy so I just ran the Cinebench R15 benchmark right now and the system did not crash that's a very good sign and I've got the highest score I have ever gotten on my Ryzen system uh, 1720 uh, for the CPU and uh, right now I'm running it again. It's not crashing, which means that I could potentially have more headroom for overclocking the uh, the memory, maybe to like 21, uh, 2400, 2666, something like that. And uh, then I can finally swap out the cooler and be on my way. Boom, everything is stable. All right, so with memory at 2666, let's see if we crash. All right, the same air code, yep. 
So now I've lowered the memory frequency to 2400 megahertz. I know that 2666 crashes. I know that 2133 is stable so far with Cinebench R15. Now let's try 2400 megahertz. CPU voltage is about 1.37. Nope. All right, there we go, another crash. Overclocking Ryzen is not frustrating one bit. So the system shut down once again with memory 2133. It was just working fine like five minutes ago. Now it's not working, now I get the shutdown. And the Ryzen Master Utility gave me a 74 degrees Celsius readout on the CPU core. So I'm thinking it could be due to the temperatures, so it's time. To swap out that cooler. So for the CPU cooler I decided to go with the Dark Rock Pro 3 from Be Quiet simply because I've been using all-in-one liquid coolers for like last three years and I decided to go to my back to the roots, stick with airflow and see how that plays out. This one has two fans, it's a fairly large heatsink so it can take a lot of heat away from the CPU which is what I want when we overclock to 4 gigahertz. I have the AIM4 brackets included so let's swap. So just looking over the thermal paste distribution here, it seems like these corners in the top did not receive any contact and I'm thinking there was uh, some mounting error. And the same can be seen here, it looks like I did not mount the cooler properly and uh, a little bit of the CPU was uh, maybe exposed on this side. So we're definitely going to make sure that the new mounting method uh, has the CPU completely covered on this block on the new cooler. all at once it's so much easier and now we have to put this in and uh, secure the screws from the back side of the motherboard which is good because you don't have to deal you know it's very difficult to get to this area but it's also you cannot do this uh, with the case lying down the case has to be standing so you can have access to the back side of the motherboard it's a good thing that the CPU cutout on this case is large enough for me not uh, being able to you know to do this inside the case not needing to take the motherboard out all right, so that's mounted, but now I cannot access my RAM slots. All right, so now that's left to do is insert the GPU. Hope I haven't made any mounting errors with the cooler and hopefully everything is working just fine. But damn, doesn't this look real good? Wow, I kind of missed uh, the whole air cooling direction. Uh, it's a little bit chunky, but I'm excited to put this into my next case and just see how that would look. Populate all the fan slots for better airflow. And uh, yeah, I kind of don't miss the, the tubing on radiators. This looks real nice. So now with the new cooler, 3.8 gigahertz, our temperatures are very similar in the proximity of around 30 degrees Celsius at idle versus uh, the previous cooler, but check out what happens at load. And now we stressed out the CPU to 100% for about 10 minutes. And in comparison to the previous cooler, we've dropped about six to seven degrees at load with uh, all the side panels closed, which is a really good reduction in temperatures and hopefully uh, will allow us to achieve that four gigahertz mark comfortably. All right, so let's, uh, Put in the 40, enter, and uh, let's hope that works. Whew. So I think we have successfully achieved the four gigahertz mark without any crashes after multiple tests. Oh. So it's been several hours of me trying to troubleshoot why exactly we crash at four gigahertz. The RAM is not an issue. I can easily go at 2400 megahertz at 3.9 gigahertz on the CPU. But as soon as I push that uh, 3.9 to four gigahertz, regardless of the voltage, you know, I put it in offset mode. I give it more, I give it less, trying to figure out what exactly is crashing the system. But uh, it seems like I haven't really won the lottery with the four gigahertz part because I cannot get it stable with Cinebench R15. I can render a video, but uh, as soon as I launch Cinebench, we just crash. And we're not reaching 70 degrees Celsius either. We're staying below that, around 68. When it's just trying to climb and it kind of stays there. Uh, when it's rendering videos, it's uh, like around 65. But uh, as soon as I launch Cinebench R15, we crash. And I'm experiencing the same behavior, even at 3.9 gigahertz on the CPU. If I try to push the memory beyond 2133, we crash. And so I'd rather stick to 3.8 gigahertz on the CPU and at 2400 megahertz on the memory, just so that we can have a bit of speed through the memory side and also in the in, you know, an adequate overclock on the CPU without trying to balance 
one or the other. So really the takeaway here for me would be that overclocking Ryzen can be a fun thing to do just to try to experiment how much extra performance you can squeeze out but it's a little bit finicky right now and uh, not everything is promised and I think a lot of the uh, incompatibility and crashes come through something dealing with memory because I am giving my CPU enough voltage everything is uh, under control in terms of temperatures so I have to experiment with different memory kits. And it's weird because Eber has identical specifications to mine and he simply loaded the four gigahertz profile on the motherboard and everything worked just fine without any crashes. So my next steps would be to replace the power supply, make sure that I don't have any issues with power delivery. And from looking at my voltages on the three and five and 12 volt rails, everything seems normal. I'm gonna also replace the RAM with different kits and also maybe substitute new storage, I'll reinstall my operating system, just go full refresh to make sure that there isn't something in there that's tinkering with that four gigahertz uh, overclock because I want it. Uh, although it doesn't give you that much performance and from what I've seen at 3.8 gigahertz with 2400 megahertz on the memory, everything seems to flow just fine. Be ready for X299 with ASRock's flagship gaming i9 motherboard, the world's first to feature a Quantia 10 gigabit per second LAN port for extreme bandwidth, a 13-phase power design for smooth power delivery and reliable overclocking, and of course, USB 3.1 Type-C that can also charge your devices of up to 36 watts. More info in the description below. So guys, I appreciate you coming along this journey with me. I apologize for somewhat of a fail overclock at four gigahertz. Even though I reach it, I cannot get it to be stable uh, with all my benchmarking suites and therefore I cannot really compare them uh, to stock 3.8, 3.9 gigahertz. And uh, yeah, I'll have to tinker with that some more but uh, let me know if you have had any success with overclocking your Ryzen CPU and what was your experience like, uh, especially if you've overclocked on an Intel machine in the past, how those two experiences compare. So let's have that conversation. I'm Dimitri with Howard Knucks. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more Ryzen content coming up very soon and we'll see you in the next video.